What do you need to know before Star Wars Outlaws? Next week, Star Wars Outlaws finally hits shelves, and it promises to be one of the biggest Star Wars games of all time. But there's plenty we need to know before we start the download. I'm Eric, welcome to Utini, and today we're going over everything you need to know before Star Wars Outlaws. It's hard to believe that we're a mere seven days away from a new Star Wars game. From everything we've seen so far, Star Wars Outlaws promises to be another fantastic entry in the history of Star Wars games. And if you want to take a trip down that particular memory lane, be sure to check out our video from last week where we did just that. But this week is about the future and getting us all as ready for it as possible. Now, you may already know that Outlaws takes place between The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, which means a broken rebellion, a distinct lack of Jedi, and most depressingly, no Han Solo. But there are still plenty more things that we can go over to ensure you're ready to jump into this fresh new galaxy the moment your pre-order is available next Friday. Now, in order to get you all up to speed today, we're going to go over a few main categories. The characters and factions you'll need to be aware of, the variety of planets you'll be able to explore, and finally, some practical steps on how to play the game itself and even how to save a little money as you do so. Be sure to stick around for that. But without any further ado, let's start off with the most important thing of all, our main character. Kay Vess is the newest protagonist in the Star Wars galaxy, and she is who you'll be playing as throughout the entirety of Star Wars Outlaws. Growing up on the streets of Canto Bight, Kay learned about the rampant inequality of the galaxy from an early age, a struggle she constantly fought against alongside her best buddy Nyx, who we'll get to in just a moment. Unlike our most recent Star Wars game protagonist, Cal Kestis, Kay is not force sensitive, but is instead an extremely persistent and talented scoundrel. When we meet her, she is a simple thief trying to make her way in the galaxy, in the hopes that she and Nyx can find that one big score to set them up for life. And with nothing but a ship, a speeder, and a trusty VM-19 heavy blaster, it's our job to help her get it through a mixture of stealth, cunning, and well, sometimes some straight up blaster fire. Kay is played by Umberly Gonzalez, who repeatedly praises Outlaws as her dream job, and be sure to check the description below for some behind the scenes looks at how she was able to bring Kay to life. But for every Luke, there's R2, for every Cal, there's BD1, and for every k Vess, well, there's Nyx. The simple way to describe Nyx is as the most adorable thing I've ever seen with my own two eyes, and if anything ever happens to him, all of Ubisoft will feel my wrath. The more accurate way, however, would be to describe Nyx as Kay's ultimate companion since she was young. He's a Murkaw, a brand new species created for Star Wars Outlaws that's reminiscent of a furry axolotl. But he's far more than just a cute companion, he's a fierce tactical asset. Throughout Outlaws, you'll be able to use Nyx in a variety of ways to help you in various situations. He can distract enemies, press buttons, fetch weapons, and even straight up attack people. Definitely following BD1 in the tradition of cute yet deadly video game sidekicks. And like 98% of other cute animals in Star Wars, and 100% of the animated clones, Nyx will be played by none other than D. Bradley Baker. Rounding out the good guys is ND5, a BX series droid commando from the Clone Wars who ends up being a close associate of K's through, let's say, an arrangement of convenience. You meet ND through Jalen Vrax, another character you'll run across in Outlaws, and this droid uses his expertise to follow you throughout the galaxy on your grand heist. While he doesn't follow you on every mission, ND5 brings a very special point of view to Outlaws. He's a soldier of a bygone era and will constantly use that expertise to both help you remotely and give further context to the struggles of galactic warfare that he's witnessing somehow for the second time. The mistreatment of Clone Wars veterans has been a part of Star Wars storytelling for quite a while, but taking one of the most fearsome enemy types and repurposing them into a wise ally is one of the most intriguing ideas we've seen in a hot minute. Jerry Rincon will bring ND5 to life, and I can't wait to see what pearls of wisdom he shares throughout the campaign. Now that's quite a solid squad of characters, but the nature of scoundrels is that they're always on the run from somebody, and in the case of outlaws, we're on the run from the syndicates. The syndicates are the various criminal organizations that run the underworld of the Star Wars galaxy while the Empire pretends that they have everything under control. It's adorable, really. Throughout the game, you'll deal with a number of these syndicates, and you'll have to balance your loyalties between them, which will affect everything from discounts you receive from certain vendors to certain missions you're able to undertake to up your influence with various bosses. Some of these syndicates we've seen before, and some are brand new, so let's take a look at who we'll be working for. The most famous syndicate in all the Star Wars is easily the Huts. Being that this game takes place between episodes 5 and 6, this group is run by his royal eminence, Jabba the Hutt, who just so happens to have a brand new wall decoration that he's quite proud of. 
The Hutt cartel has been littered throughout Star Wars media for decades, ever since the old worm tried to feed loot to the Rancor, so it's no wonder that they'll have such a distinct presence in Outlaws, even including an extra mission surrounding Jabba for those who pick up the gold and ultimate versions of the game. Uh, but don't worry, we have a way around that near the end of the video. Historically, the Huts have been plagued by constant infighting that has occasionally threatened their empire of smuggling and other illicit activities, so Kay may have to pick her battles a bit more carefully than usual if this is where she wants to place her bets. But the Huts aren't the only familiar faces that we'll see littered throughout Outlaws, and this next syndicate actually has quite a few faces, come to think of it. They may not seem like it, but the Pikes have been one of the most prevalent gangs in Star Wars canon over the last few years, showing up in The Clone Wars, Solo, The Book of Boba Fett, and now Outlaws. And even though their design does tend to fluctuate a bit between projects, their power is unquestionable. The Pikes have had quite the heavy presence in the lead up to Star Wars Outlaws, especially because they'll be the main criminal presence on Tashara, a brand new moon that we'll be covering a bit later in this video. As opposed to the smuggling operations favored by the Huts, the Pikes favor the industry of spice production, which led to their inclusion in the Kessel Mines and Solo. Outlaws shows just how profitable Spice has been for the Pikes over the years, and if you decide Kay deserves a bit more luxury in her life at the expense of some moral high ground, they may be the syndicate for you. And speaking of Solo, we have to address what is easily my most anticipated syndicate in the game, Crimson Dawn. Led by the spectacular Lady Kira, Crimson Dawn values stealth and the gathering of precious information as they spread their influence across the galaxy rather than the more upfront brutish tactics of the previous two cartels. However, you may not know that part of this story has already been told over the past couple of years in comics. War of the Bounty Hunters, Crimson Reign, and Hidden Empire were three giant events surrounding Kira's conquest of the galaxy during this time period. And in fact, panels from these series have already been used in behind the scenes videos about outlaws, all but ensuring that the designers have taken inspiration from these other sources. Couple all of that with Kira herself confirmed to be in the game, and I'll personally have quite a hard time turning my back on this mercenary band of saboteurs. And finally, we have two syndicates that have been created solely for the Outlaws campaign, the Ashiga Clan and Zarek Besh. Now, while the Ashiga Clan may be a new creation, you'll recognize their planet of operations, Kajimi, from the Rise of Skywalker. The clan, made up of the blind hierarchical Molito species, also doesn't value things like wealth, power, and galactic expansion like the other syndicates. Their focus is more so on the well-being and prosperity of their hive, and they'll do whatever it takes to maintain their safety. And if you decide to abide by their code of honor to help the hive mind achieve their goals, their loyalty is all but guaranteed. But that won't come so easily, or really at all, when it comes to our final syndicate, Zarek Besh. Zarek Besh is the newest syndicate on the block in the Star Wars galaxy at the time of Outlaws, and they hold the distinction of being the only group through which you won't be able to gain reputation. Because, well, they have a death mark on you. That's right, they're the bad guys. Led by the slimy Sleero, Zarek Besh is focused solely on making a name for themselves through whatever means necessary. And they do it from their glorious base of operations on Canto Bite, Kay's home. That wasn't that spicy. Throughout the game, you'll be able to earn reputation with all of these syndicates, Zarek Besh aside, and based on the choices you make, doors will open, doors will close, and consequences will be felt across the galaxy. Luckily, there will be plenty of galaxy to choose from. So now that we know who you'll be seeing in the galaxy, let's figure out where we'll be going. Because let's be honest, the planets of Star Wars can be just as iconic as the characters, and Outlaws is going to be no different. We have five different playable worlds, a mix of the old and the new, but there's no way we can start with anything other than Old Faithful. Tatooine, oh Tatooine. It's a classic for a reason, right? Run mainly by the Huts, Tatooine is home to the original hive of scum and villainy, and it looks like we'll be spending quite a bit of time around here. But luckily, we won't just be limited to walking around Mos Espa, because while visits to the Cantina are definitely on board, we'll be able to explore the Dune Sea, interact with Jawas, head over to Jabba's Palace, and do it all aboard a speeder that makes light work of the planet's expansive landscape. Some Star Wars fans may be tired of Tatooine by now, but I am absolutely not one of them. And if you're making a game that involves the Huts before Return of the Jedi, there's not a more obvious inclusion in my book. Next up is another visually familiar area with a potentially unfamiliar name, Cantonica, or as you may know it, the planet that houses Canto Bight. As the home of both Kay Best and the fearsome Zarek Besh, Cantonica is sure to have a plethora of story importance as the two sides fight against each other throughout the game. 
If it's been a while since you've seen The Last Jedi, Canto Bight is a city of pure excess that continuously attempts to ignore its seedy underbelly. We're talking high rolling casinos, thrilling father races, lavish architecture, and outlandish parties. All the while, people like Kay are doing all they can to just survive another day on the streets. A stark contrast from the sandy hills of Tatooine, Cantonica's ultra-modern style and emphasis on luxury promises to give our scoundrel all the motivation she needs to take Zarek Besh for all they're worth. And our final familiar locale is the aforementioned home of the brand new Ashika clan, Kajimi. Easily one of my favorite parts of The Rise of Skywalker, Kajimi is, in a word, striking. A frozen planet ripe with Japanese design influences, Kajimi is just as beautiful as it is deadly. Back in 2020, Alex Segura's novel Poe Dammer in Freefall explored the criminal underside of Kajimi by expanding the story of Poe and Zori Bliss. And while this time period won't necessarily allow those characters to pop up in this particular narrative, fans of that book will have no doubt that an era of violence and chaos is always lurking right beneath the frozen surface of this world. And just like that, I'm going to mention another book, because even though our fourth planet has never been seen in visual media, it has been mentioned time and time again in one of my favorite series, Chuck Wendig's Aftermath Trilogy. We're talking about Akiva. Bringing Akiva into Star Wars Outlaws is a fascinating decision. A planet with more of a jungle biome, Akiva is home to a wide variety of citizens, including the future Snap Wexley, or Temin as he would be known in this time period. Poe Dameron's future co-pilot lives on this planet with Mr. Bones, one of the best and weirdest droids in canon, and although their inclusion in the game is still purely theoretical, the possibility is absolutely there. But regardless of the cameo potential of Akiva, the landscape brings a welcome change to the harsh weather and harsh bureaucrats of the others, and I can't wait to be racing through the jungles hopefully on a mission for Mr. Bones. Our last world that we'll be exploring is probably the most important as it's been created from the ground up purely for Star Wars Outlaws. Tashara is a brand new moon mainly run by the Pikes, and we are going to be spending a lot of time here. There's a full video in the description from IGN about the design work that went into creating Tashara, but for our purposes, you just need to know that this is the moon inspired by the African savanna with plenty of diverse geography, dense settlements, and new lore to add to the Star Wars canon. So there we have it, five playable worlds, all with their own unique makeup, but how do you get around them? Well, we have our speeder, which will motor us around each planet's surface, but for space travel, another key part of Outlaws, we have the Trailblazer, a prototype EML 850 light freighter from the Clone Wars era. It's the last of its kind, and it's big enough to haul cargo, yet small enough to maneuver while still packing a punch something we'll surely need when it comes to dogfighting. All right, so now we know who we're playing as, who our allies are, what syndicates we'll be meeting, where we'll be visiting, and how to get around. There's just one more thing you need to know before release day, how to actually start playing. Uh, let's go over the basics. Outlaws releases on August 30th on PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and PC. While physical versions of the game are surely available from your retailer of choice, you can also pre-order the game digitally so that it's all ready for you the second the game goes live. And secondly, if you haven't played a Star Wars video game in a while, or if you're just not the most avid gamer, you should know that Outlaws is technically an open world game. We'll go over plenty of gameplay specifics next week to celebrate the launch, but before you actually buy the game, know that this will feel quite a bit different than Jedi Fallen Order or Jedi Survivor. While there will be a linear storyline, you'll also be able to enjoy a variety of side missions at your own pace to help your reputation with the syndicates or even just to make a few credits. This will give you a lot of choice as a player and include exploration on your speeder, ground combat, stealth missions, important dialogue options, mini games, and ship combat, all of which we'll cover in detail next week. But our final tip today is about pricing. It's no secret that video games are expensive. And Ubisoft, the company behind Star Wars Outlaws, has come under fire for their tiered pricing model lately that includes additional cosmetics and extra missions, which could cost you up to $130 just to access everything in the game. But fear not, there's a solution. If you're an Xbox or PC gamer, you have the opportunity to take advantage of Ubisoft Plus. This is not a sponsor, but it is a tremendous deal for Star Wars gamers. For $17.99 a month, you gain access to all of Ubisoft's games at their highest level the day they are released, and this can save you over $100 immediately. For me, I know it will take me less than a month to play Star Wars Outlaws all the way through, and I don't usually replay a lot of games, so I can sign up for Ubisoft Plus, play the whole game with all the content, then cancel my membership until the DLC comes out, thereby accessing $130 of content for less than 20. 
this may not work for everyone. And if you're on PlayStation, unfortunately, this isn't an option regardless. But Star Wars is at its best when it's easiest for everyone to enjoy. And if we can save you money and increase your love of the fandom, that's a no-brainer to me. A new Star Wars game is never just a game. It represents new lore, new characters, and an entirely new addition to the map of the galaxy as a whole. All of this is just the briefest overview of what's to come next week when we boot up Star Wars Outlaws, and I could not be more excited. Be sure to join us on launch day when we'll go over the gameplay elements that we can't wait to try. And before you do, feel free to drop a like and subscribe on this video if we made it worth your time. Until then, may the force be with you.